couple projects known as the Bluegrass Albums, mm -hmm. which uh, just some wonderful people. Uh, let me think now. J.D. Crow, Doyle Lawson, Todd Phillips. Yeah, Todd is on the first uh, the first four volumes, and uh, the first two we didn't use a dobro, but every volume after that we we have used one. And Jared is this Douglas. something that you spearheaded? Uh, pretty much, or I, it started out as a Tony Rice bluegrass album because I hadn't done a straight bluegrass album for many years, and it started out as my own project. And then when when uh, most of the recording was done, I thought, well, this sounds like a group project. Why not? Why not just bill everybody equally and give it a group title and mm -hmm. start a series, which is what we did. And so uh, it continues to this day. There's there's four volumes already out. And a fifth one has been recorded and mixed, and uh, it's the same band except instead of Todd Phillips, it has Mark Schatz on bass, mm -hmm. and uh, instead of Bobby Hicks on fiddle, it has Vassar Clements. What was that? Was there a basic philosophy behind the bluegrass albums now, trying to capture the old, I guess, uh, Bill Monroe style of bluegrass as opposed to some of the more modern styles? Yeah, you you, you sort of answered your own question. That's exactly what it was about. Was to was to. Uh, to take that real old traditional sound and instrumentation and make it as precision as we could with with modern recording techniques, even though those records were live, they were they were all done you know multi-track stereo and a couple of them were mixed down to digital. And what is the difference between most of the bluegrass we hear and the traditional, the the real Bill Monroe style? You mean the difference between that and the bluegrass that you hear today? Exactly. Yeah. Uh. Well, you know, I don't think bluegrass has really changed that much in 30 years, but the spectacle has changed. And, uh, you know, if you think about it, it's uh, it's a music form that's got to grow, and that includes, you know, all of the instruments that make it up. They they have to grow. Otherwise, let's face it, there would be three albums. There would be a Bill Monroe album, a Flatt and Scruggs album, and a Osborne Brothers album, and then that would be the cap on bluegrass. There wouldn't but be any reason to do any more. Right, but it, uh, everybody... You know that comes along that uh, wants to be an accomplished musician. I think will find a way to add uh, his or her own personal touch to it, to mm -hmm. the music form, and and that being the case, it's going to take on a little different flavor. You know that's going to evolve. Talk about a little bit about Kate Wolf. I noticed your name all over her, all, most of her albums and stuff. Yeah, and she's a person I never got to meet, but uh, I've always admired her music. Yeah, I have too. She, she was a great lady. How did you uh, come in contact with her? Uh. I'm trying to think of how I met Kate Wolf. I think I was with uh, was yeah I was with Grisman and we did a couple of co bills uh, and and Kate was on a show and then we became friends that way and then she asked me to do some recording and then some more recording and then <laughs> some more recording and I think I'm on about three or four of her albums. Oh yeah, I remember. I think the last time I saw you was in the freezing cold up at the Strawberry Bluegrass Festival. And to this day, all the people that were out in that field watching you play want to know how you picked that guitar in that cold weather. Well, I'll tell you, I had a ball because to me, that's that's just about perfect finger moving temperatures, about 60 degrees. Or, that was a little colder than nah, that. Maybe, was, but, that uh, was closer to the, but, the 40 uh, there. <laughs> well, I'll, t I'll tell you, I'll cheat a little bit here and say that it, the stage lights right. they brought it up to a certain uh comfortable temperature you were enjoying benefits we weren't out in the field i'd rather i'd rather play in the cold 10 to 1 than i would to be excessively hot anywhere uh -huh. what do you like about festivals and what do you dislike about festivals well there's a there's a few things one i think they could be uh more strategically placed uh both in terms of uh the venue itself and the time of the year uh there's some festivals that are back in North Carolina and Virginia and Tennessee and Georgia that they have from June to August that's just absolutely grueling and uh, no shade trees around you know no restroom facilities backstage or you know, degrees no yeah, ice. right no ice no uh, you know it's just I think with a little bit more effort on the part of promoters they could be made better but then at the same time there is quite a few of them where they really take good care of you you know, they take care of the artists. Mm -hmm. Well, naturally, the ones I dislike are the ones where they really don't care about the <laughs> artists. <right? laughs> One last question, because I know you got to get down there and play for the folks. I try to, yeah. <laughs> What's your fascination with Gordon Lightfoot? What what turned you on to him initially, and what keeps him a, a real magnificent songwriter for you? Well, back when I was in high school in Florida, and this this was over 20 years ago, 
uh, I had an art teacher that became a friend, and uh, and I was more or less a diehard bluegrass musician at the time, you know, and that and that was sort of the bulk of my listening. And then uh, he turned me on to Lightfoot and and different people from the vanguard, what I call the vanguard mm -hmm. folk era, you know. But Lightfoot was just one of them where every word that I heard lyrically I thought had value. And uh, I guess I could honestly say he's been my favorite songwriter since then. And then a few years ago we met and have got to hang out a few times together and he's an incredible human being too. Did you get to really? play with him? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I like his writing. What can I say? Yeah. It's incredible. Well, we enjoy the way your interpretation of his songs well, an thank awful you. lot. Thank you very much. I want to thank you for joining us here, Tony, and uh, we're yeah, looking bet. forward to the next time you come out to California. All right, and the next time I come out, if you want me sitting right here with you again, I'll do it. <laughs> you got an invitation. You got it. Thanks a lot. You bet. Tony Rice.